In today's video, I'm going to show you how I go about decluttering an overwhelming and messy space. I think a lot of us can admit we have too much stuff and life would be so much easier if we dialed it all back. But it's knowing where and how to start, isn't it? I'm going to take you on a little tour of what we're dealing with here. I'm going to be decluttering my boys room and oh my goodness does it need it. You can't even see the top bunk because we've got so many teddies. Every cupboard and drawer is filled to the brim. So much so that this is where the clothes go now. We just do not have room for them all. And for me, the worst part about it is it becomes messy so quickly. It's unsustainable mess that we just cannot keep on top of. And I'm going to be honest, my mental health's been suffering for it. So I'm doing this as a kindness to myself and to my boys. Because no child needs this much. They are absolutely spoilt for choice. Lighting a candle here just to help me get through. But yeah, because they have so much to choose from, oftentimes it overwhelms them and they end up not really playing with anything. They just get everything out. Well, my two-year-old does anyway, but it's not really quality play. And I'll talk more about that later on. But right now, what I'm doing here is splitting the declutter into categories. This is going to make it seem less overwhelming and to help us keep on track. So I've got two areas and then just two general problems. The areas are the top bunk and the bookshelf. And the problems are toys and clothes. I didn't write them in order of priority or anything like that. I'm just going to pick one and get stuck in. And as you can see, I thought I'd start with clothes first. Personally, when it comes to decluttering, what blocks me is not knowing where to start. It stops me from even trying because I just feel like it's going to be this long and arduous task. And God knows how long it's going to take. But I want to show you today that it doesn't have to be stressful or take as long as you might think. You can even do it over days and weeks tackle one thing on the list and then come back when you feel ready to tackle another but I just want to stress to you the sense of relief and accomplishment you'll feel ticking off your checklist and seeing the room transform it's amazing and if I as a sentimental person that can't let go of anything can do it so can you so as always grab yourself a drink and get comfy or get yourself a pen and paper get your declutter hat on and we can do it together when it comes to the clothes in this room, I don't think I've gone through them in over two years. That sounds awful, doesn't it? But my seven-year-old is very particular when it comes to his clothes. He has certain comfort items of clothing that he would happily wear until they're disintegrated. But I'm the same. I have comfort clothes too. He also loves onesies and PJs and he very rarely wears day-to-day -day clothes unless we're going out. And on top of that, he's not really had a growth spurt in a while, bless him. A lot of things that fit him two years ago still fit him now. So I've not really had that sense of urgency or a push to just get it all sorted. But I'm doing it today because like I said, the clothes are constantly overflowing. We've been keeping a lot of the clothes in this box, which is far from ideal because you have to get everything out when you're looking for something. By the way, that bag I've got there is my sentimentals bag. That's going in the attic and it's got things like memorable clothing and things that they had when they were babies and crocheted blankets and things that I just don't want to give away. I'm trying to be strict with myself with this declutter, but I also want to give myself some leniency because some things are just too precious and I want to look back on them. My problem is, though, I could give a rock sentimental value and I would keep everything if I could. So I'm trying to remember that it's healthy to let things go and we don't need to keep everything. I have photos of the boys in the clothes, so I don't need to keep them. Anyway, at some point down the line, those drawers behind me stopped having a specific purpose, like one for tops, one for trousers. We just started lumping everything into whatever drawer had room. So we're going to change that today and bring back some order to the chaos. By the way, apologies if I sound bunged up in this video. It's because I am but I'm trying my absolute best to sound as clear as possible. Anyway, back to what I was saying about the boys having too much stuff. I'm a firm believer in less is more when it comes to toys. I know that sounds very hard to believe when you look at the state of this bedroom, but me and Charlie, Charlie's my partner for those who are new here, we probably bought less than a third of the stuff that's in this bedroom. The rest was bought by very enthusiastic grandparents and other family members on birthdays and Christmases, which I'm of course so grateful for. I'm ridiculously happy that my boys have so many people who love them and want to spoil them, but it can mean that they become overwhelmed with choice. Look at those Christmas jumpers. I'm keeping all of them. Zero guilt. Please don't ask me how we managed to get two of the same jumper there, both the same size. I do know, actually, though, it's because me and my family are all obsessed with nutmeg in Morrison's. 
That's what I mean though, I'll buy clothes and then my family will buy clothes and we end up with duplicates. But yeah, there's so much going on in this bedroom. I've found that the boys play a lot better in the living room when they've bought just a few toys downstairs. Because then they can focus on that toy and really getting into that imaginative play state. They can't do that when they're getting distracted by lots of other options. And that imaginative play is so important. I also love decluttering because it gives me that opportunity to teach the boys about children who are less fortunate than they are. And the joys of giving to others. Just going to shovel all that mess out of the way. I haven't got time to mess around. I know the boys aren't here in this video, but we do periodically go through the toy boxes to pick out things to donate. Now, I'm using a whiteboard pen here to label the drawers so I don't get distracted when I'm putting the clothes away. I know that sounds really silly, but it's the little things like this that can make all of the difference when it comes to being overwhelmed or not. It reduces that mental load by just a fraction, but honestly, it's a good tip if you're anything like me. That's why I needed to do this particular declutter kid-free. I needed to be fully in the zone with no distractions. If I didn't, I wasn't going to get it done. That's just the truth. I am so distractible and I find it so hard to stay on task. Even harder to get into the mood to start a task as well. I have to cultivate this perfect environment in order to be able to do things like this. I have to set the mood with my scented candles because some smells just uplift me and it really helps. I don't know if you noticed at the start of the video but I opened the windows really wide to let all of the air in. I can't do that when the kids are home because I'm scared they'll fall out. But I love to have a nice airy room. And one big thing I do, you'll see in a minute. It's a game changer if you start to lose motivation halfway through a task. And basically, I just treat myself like a dog or a child and I reward myself every time I finish something or check something off the list. It gives me something to look forward to and it's a nice pat on the back for when I finish something. So you'll see throughout the video, I start small, but every time I check something off the list, like the first time I'll, I'll sit down and have a little bit of chocolate. Then I'll go and have a dance and let some of the stress out. And then another time I'll sit and have a McDonald's and watch a bit of my programme. And I just find it re-energises you and gives you that oomph to go and start again. It breaks up the monotony of it all too. A big caveat there though is that you can only do that one thing. You can't have some chocolates and then have a dance. Because that could potentially mean you fall out of the groove of things because your break's gone on for just a bit too long. It's about finding that balance. Because I don't know if anyone's like me, but if I'm in the middle of something and I get snapped out of it, chances are I'm not going to go back and finish it. I wish I wasn't like this, but you've got to work with the brain you've been blessed with, haven't you? And there's something to be said about staying positive and finding tools and tricks that work with your personality type. I know all too well how easy it is to get bogged down and just completely fed up with yourself when other people seem to have it all together. And here you are, surrounded by chaos and not being able to keep on top of the simplest things. It's enough to make anyone feel resigned and just think, oh, what's the point? I'm just going to stop trying and let the chaos take over. But you've got to fight for yourself. We might not be able to do things the way everybody else does, but it doesn't mean that all hope is lost. And that's why I make these videos. For the naturally messy, the chronically overwhelmed, people who struggle with ADHD and autism, and just anyone who needs some motivation or a friendly chat. I got you. I have struggled with being messy my entire life and I'm always trying to find manageable ways to get what needs to be done, done. Anyway, as you can see, I'm onto the second part of my checklist and I've just emptied all of the top bunk. And look at this complete nightmare. All of this was on the top bunk. I have been absolutely dreading this and it was definitely the most difficult part of this declutter. But I knew once I got this bit done, the rest of the declutter was going to seem easy. But to be honest, it looked more daunting than it actually was. And I consider myself very skilled at tidying up a messy space very quickly. Not so good at preventing the mess in the first place, but I'm always trying and learning. And I like to think I've got some good tips and tricks to share, especially on the subject of overwhelm. This is the second part of a series of how to when you're overwhelmed videos. The first was how to tidy when you're overwhelmed. And now we've got this one, how to declutter when you're overwhelmed. So if you have any ideas or topics you think I should add on to this series, I'd be really interested to hear them. This video is also the second part of my declutter series, so I'll be adding to that one as well. So yeah, there's lots of things coming. Look at this, by the way. This was what my cousin brought Ike for his first birthday. So weird, I love it. By the way, if you notice my nose is getting more and more blocked as the video goes along, it's because it is. I've got a sinus infection and I'm trying to finish this voiceover before I become completely incoherent. Bit annoying, but it is what it is. I can't seem to catch a break recently, honestly. We had a sickness bug in the house not long ago. 
And honestly, I just constantly seem to have some sort of ailment or another. I don't know whether it's stress or because I eat like crap. Probably a combination of the two. I want so badly to get back into a healthy routine. But every time I get like a few days into it, something will crop up. Like someone in the house will get poorly or I'll have a sleepless night which will throw my whole routine out of whack and the first thing I do is go to the fridge and eat because it comforts me. And I'm trying really hard at the minute to push past that block and to not cave every time something stressful or inconvenient happens because I really don't need to eat a whole M&S trifle because I've got to phone the doctors that day. Don't need to eat a macaroni for breakfast because I kept me awake all night. But it just gets me through stressful times. Something I struggle with as well is that I'm a very all or nothing person. So when I want to become a healthier version of myself, I always take it too far. I end up setting myself ridiculous goals and things I can't stick to. Like cutting out all sugars and getting up at 5.30 in the morning. And an exercise routine that isn't sustainable. And I expect to upheave my life and do all of these things all at once that I'm not used to. And then when it ultimately fails, I think, right, see, I can't do this instead of just making small, gradual, sustainable changes. And I think the reason I can't get on board with the gradual thing is because the results aren't instant. And if I can't see instant changes, or if I'm not in pain or starving, that means it's not working, which is complete rubbish, isn't it? So what I'm trying to convince myself to do is add a few new healthy habits each month. That way it's manageable and I'm not overwhelming myself. And I can practice these things until they become second nature and just daily habits. So my goal for October is I'm going to switch from full fat Coke to Pepsi Max. I know that's still not ideal, but it's about making gradual changes and not completely uprooting your life. I'm going to go for a 15 minute walk after the school run. We take the dog for a walk in the evenings, but I want to add more walking into my routine and then eventually build up to some workouts in the coming months. And the last thing I'm going to try to do is make my bed every morning. Because it's not just about the physical, it's about the mental too and feeling like you have things together. Just had a little dance there after checking off another thing on the list. But yeah, I've heard so many people rave about how important making your bed in the morning is. I struggle to get my head round it because it's time consuming and you're just going to get back into it later that day. But I do feel better mentally when my bed is made. It just looks so nice. And it puts you in that mindset where you want to make the rest of the house look nice. So I can definitely see why it's beneficial. We're on to sorting the bookshelf now for anyone who hasn't been watching the screen. But yeah, if I manage to stick to those little things in October and then stick with it after that, I think that'd be a really good video to make. Sharing about what I've learned and what I've overcame and the changes I've noticed. What do you think? I'll just have to see how that goes anyway. But I definitely want to just feel more well. I'm constantly tired, I've always got brain fog and I feel like I'm here but not really here. It's getting to me because I want to sit in a room and savour my time with my friends and family but I'm always blooming knackered. Anyway, I'll stop whinging now. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to find books that we never read, books we have duplicates of and stick them in a bag to donate because we have a similar issue as the one with the toys. When we look at the bookshelf we cannot pick what to read because it's so busy on there. It's become a bit of a dumping ground for Rudy's drawings as well. And I have that little blue folder in front of me for Rudy's drawings, so I'm going to put them all in there. Rudy's a wonderful little artist and I hate to throw his drawings away. It's been wonderful to see the progression of his skills as he's gotten older. And it'll be nice for him to be able to look back on as well. So yeah, some of his drawings are a little creepy. He likes to draw monsters and robots, but so did I and I think I've turned out all right. I remember I used to love to draw alien and monster families like a mum and a dad and a grandma of all these different kinds of monsters. I used to love watching things like Star Wars and Star Trek and Space Precinct and Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings and yeah. It's funny as well because Ike always makes me draw families of cars now, families of ambulances, families of fire engines. I don't know what that's all about but it's cute. But Rudy when he's older wants to be a director of scary movies. And I've been absolutely bigging him up because I think that's a fantastic idea. And we're going to watch a load of scary, age-appropriate movies this Halloween. Like Nightmare Before Christmas and Coraline and Monster House. Some of the Scooby-Doo movies. I love it. I think it's so important to lean into your kids' talents and hobbies and just encourage them as much as you can. I remember my parents were so encouraging. Still are. But I was always made to feel like I could do and be anything. And I think it installed this deep confidence in me and a knowing that if I really applied myself and practised and stayed consistent, 
I'd be able to succeed at whatever I wanted to do in life. And I carried that with me, even despite being a really shy and quiet person growing up. You probably wouldn't think it listening to my voiceovers because I ramble on so much, but I'm actually really introverted and reserved. But I've always had this intrinsic feeling of, I got this. If I want to become this thing or that thing, I have the resources within myself to be able to become it. And it's something I thank my parents for so much. I truly believe that's the reason I'm making this video and talking to you right now. And I want so much for my boys to have that inner confidence too. Anyway, I had a nightmare trying to figure out how to store those books. You know the ones with the puppet gloves? How are you meant to stack them side by side? I think they must be intended for, you know the little bookshelves where you stack everything facing forward? Those really cute ones. But we don't really have the wall space for anything like that in this bedroom. Ah well. So now I'm emptying the last two drawers and they're just completely chaotic. Everything just got smushed in there. I don't think much of the stuff in there actually gets used. No one really even looks in there. Just because you can't really see what you're looking at anyway. It's all like miscellaneous stuff so I'm hoping to get rid of the majority of it. And then I'm going to try and turn it into a functional drawer. Maybe for things like um, pencil cases and card games. Because we love to play Top Trumps and Uno in this house. And Rudy has a lot of Pokemon cards as well. So that's my aim for the top drawer. And then the drawer beneath that is going to be for like slime and Play-Doh. Honestly, I can't wait for everything to have its allocated place again. It's going to make it so much easier to clean up after the boys have played. And they'll be able to know where to find things and where to put things again. And I know that's the way things automatically should be in a functioning house. But if you know me or you're similar to me, you'll know it's very hard to run a functioning house when your brain doesn't function in a regular way. So this declutter and reorganise is going to really help in so many ways. I can't promise that it'll never become disorganised again, but every step taken towards making things simpler and reducing the amount of things helps in preventing it, doesn't it? And I feel like I gain clarity and experience with every big clean and declutter that I do. Even if the only thing I learn is how to clean up faster and more efficiently. That's a win in my eyes. But no, doing these cleans and making these videos helps me to gather tools and coping mechanisms that I can then use to teach and help others. I always say I wish I'd have had someone growing up who understood the way my brain worked. And why I struggled with things like memory and keeping things tidy and organised. And yeah, I might not have had that, but now, instead, I can be that person for others. And also for my own children who may potentially struggle with the same things I do. I can be their advocate and help them navigate things. I have a lot of different methods I'm so excited to share on this channel too, for people who struggle with keeping their spaces tidy. In my How to Tidy When You're Overwhelmed video, I shared my list method. I also have a video on my timer method. I think that one was called 60 Minute House Clean Challenge. Then there's the spin the wheel method and this one's really good for if you struggle with things like task initiation. I have a video on that one too. They're all there in case you wanted to check any of them out. And I'm also so excited to share these methods with you. I call them the ping pong method and the flitting method. I haven't made videos about them yet but I will do eventually. But basically each method will net you something different. Some of them are about reducing overwhelm. Others are about finding novelty in a task and others will help if you get distracted and bored very easily. Not every method will work for every person. I've just got to interrupt here and say, look how cute these are. My mum bought Rudy a little Halloween advent calendar a few years ago. He obviously doesn't understand who half of those characters are, but I just love them so much. And I also love this little poster. Rudy absolutely loves the IT crowd. We always fall asleep to it. And I know that sounds very odd, but background noise really helps to soothe us to sleep. A lot of people would assume that background noise would be like uh, white noise or rain sounds. But no, it's always been comfort comedies for me. And Rudy just kind of latched onto that. Anyway, we're three quarters of the way through this declutter. The bookshelf now looks fantastic if I do say so myself. And so I treated myself to a little McDonald's. And then I got started on the last part which was sorting through the toys. And back to what I was saying before I rudely interrupted myself. Not every cleaning method is going to work for every person because we're all so different. So it's really a case of trial and error and testing what works for you and what doesn't. And I'm always going to be here searching for new ways and new methods to deal with messiness. So if you haven't found one already, hopefully, eventually, I'll be able to find something that resonates with you. Anyway, this voiceover has taken me over a week to do. It got to a point halfway through that I just had to stop for a few days because, honestly, I was incomprehensible. 
And you know what? I was actually thankful of the break. A lot of the time these days, I find it hard to relax. If I have a spare few hours, I have this overwhelming urge to be productive. And I think that's due to the fact that constantly being on the go really helps with my executive dysfunction. Executive dysfunction is something that's plagued my life and it's made it very, very difficult to get by. Even at times just to do the simplest tasks like have a shower and brush my teeth. Starting this channel improved my symptoms drastically because I was able to turn cleaning the house, something that I just have always struggled with, into a creative project. Making the videos also held me accountable. But yeah, I've found that if I start my day productive, I'm more likely to carry on being productive. And that massively improves my mental health because I feel like I've had a fulfilling day, not a wasted one. But I know if I allow myself a day to rest or even a few hours to do nothing at all, that will turn into a few days and then a week. And then I'm in a rut and then the house is complete chaos. I'm overstimulated. I forget important things and then it's eventually burnout. And then after that, I have to dig myself out and relearn all of the healthy and productive habits that I fought so hard to build in the first place. Does that make sense? I guess it won't to a lot of people. But then again, if you chose to watch this video, I assume you probably do relate to a certain extent. Anyway, essentially, I've got a little bit of a handle on my executive dysfunction. And I worry about how long that will last and taking my foot off the gas. But yeah, because I've been poorly, I kind of gave myself a free pass to relax guilt-free. I watched some telly in my blanket and caught up with friends and family, and it was very much needed. I obsess a lot about my creative projects, and this channel is my creative baby. I completely pour my heart and soul into making these videos, and sometimes that can be at the expense of a social life. Because on top of this and actual work and looking after my family, I have nothing else left. And I hate that. But again, it's the all or nothing in me. I really struggle with compartmentalising and carving out time for other things in my life. But because of the break, I was able to have a lovely conversation with my brother. He really struggles with autism and he's been feeling very low about the way he communicates with people. My brother is an amazingly intelligent person, by the way. He's so interesting and so observant. He's just a wealth of knowledge and I wish he knew how brilliant he was but he thinks people don't want to listen to him. He thinks they find him frustrating because he struggles with articulating what goes on in his head. So we had a good long chat and I hope I was able to give him some guidance and reassure him. And it's really given me a kick up the bum and a reminder that I need to take these breaks and focus on what's most important in life. And that's quality time with my friends and family. But this channel is so important to me too and I'm forever in the pursuit of balance. But yeah, if you're ever wondering why I sometimes have breaks between posting videos or it takes a while for me to get one out, that's why. I'm trying to find balance. But never doubt though that this is something I absolutely love to do. I have found so much joy in making these videos and I hope I've been able to convey that and bring you joy as well. Or if nothing else, show you that you're not alone. And that's the declutter all done. Completed in four easy to manage sections. And now all I've got to do is the finishing touches to the room, like making the bed and hoovering and putting on some cosy lights. And then I'm going to show you how many bags I actually got from this declutter. Apologies if you can hear rain, by the way. A lot of the time I do my voiceovers in the car and it's absolutely chucking it down right now. But yeah, have a guess at how many bags you think I filled. And then after that, I'm going to show you two other areas in the house that I desperately need to declutter. And I'm going to let you guys vote for which one you think I should do next. So yeah, overall, this declutter wasn't nearly as bad as I expected it to be. And that's because I broke it down into manageable steps. It's all about having a strategy and plan and following it, rather than just plunking yourself into the middle of a chaotic space and trying to wing it. Doing it that way is obviously going to make a lot of people freeze and just think, I cannot do this. Look how great the room looks now, by the way. I'm absolutely buzzing. But yeah, because I knew what I needed to get on with each step of the way, and I gave myself little reward breaks, what would have been stressful and hard was actually an enjoyable experience. Now, let's count these bags. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a guitar. And here is the cupboard of doom in my bedroom. Look at the absolute state of this. There's so much space in there that could be utilised, but I just don't know what to say there. I've already done a declutter of this once before on TikTok and that wasn't even a year ago. And this is what we're dealing with in the kitchen. 
every single cupboard's just chaotic. This is the knife and fork drawer, chaotic. I'm like Monica Geller with that big cupboard she hides, except it's every single cupboard in the house. My problem is, if it's out of sight, it's out of mind, but it's become a problem now. So let me know in the comments which one you think I should do next, the one in my bedroom or the kitchen. I've obviously saved the worst two till last. I cannot think of anything worse than decluttering these things. But it's going to make keeping the house clean so much easier once I've done them. If anyone's got any ideas or storage tips or hacks or anything like that, please let me know. And that's it for another video. I really hope you enjoyed watching.